Hello, my name is Eric Chappell, Civil Community Evangelist for Autodesk, and I'm here to tell you today about InfraWorks and BIM 360, what you need to know. The topics I'm going to cover today are what is BIM 360, opening existing models with the latest release of InfraWorks, setting up BIM 360, using Model Builder, and what can you do with BIM 360. Let's start with what is BIM 360. BIM 360 is a cloud-based data platform that allows data for a BIM project to transition from design to planning to construction and even operations. The component of BIM 360 that we'll be discussing today is BIM 360 Document Management, often referred to as BIM 360 Docs. This is where you'll publish your InfraWorks models when you want to collaborate with others, enjoy the benefits of the powerful BIM 360 platform, or make your InfraWorks models part of BIM 360 projects that are already up and running. So why the change? Well, BIM 360 is built for collaboration. It accepts many file types, has a viewer that can view many data types like DWGs, Revit files, 3D models, PDFs, and much more. It has granular and intuitive user access control, has tools for markups, comments, and much more. So it actually makes perfect sense for InfraWorks collaboration to be handled with BIM 360 rather than having a separate collaboration platform. And, InfraWorks models are often a component of an overall BIM project, so they're better alongside other project data rather than off in their own little world. I think you'll find that you'll really like the BIM 360 collaboration environment, or maybe you're already familiar with it. But with any change comes questions, and that's what I'm here to clear up for you today. Let's start with opening existing models. Now some general information about the latest release and model versions. First, be aware that InfraWorks models are not backward compatible. Once you've upgraded a model to the latest release, you will not be able to open it in an older release. Also, you should know that every time you open a legacy model in the latest release, it will be upgraded. One result of the upgrade is that all of your design roads will be converted to component roads. This will be done by matching tracks in your design road styles with similar components. If the legacy model that you're opening has been cached, meaning there's a local copy, then you'll have the opportunity to preserve the original and upgrade a copy. We're going to look at three different scenarios of existing models that you may need to open. First, cloud models that are in the cloud and also have a local copy or cache. Cloud models that have no local cache, meaning they live only in the cloud. And finally, local models which are strictly local and have never been in the cloud. Let's start with the most likely scenario, a cloud model that also has been locally cached. You can tell that a local cache exists by the broom icon at the bottom of the model tile on the home screen. When you open one of these models, you'll be given two choices, upgrade model and upgrade a copy. If you choose upgrade model, the locally cached version of the model will be upgraded as it opens. Now what happens if there are changes in the cloud version that you haven't yet synced to the local version? Well, the first time you sync the model, it will be migrated to the new BIM 360 environment. At this time, InfraWorks will sync changes between the cloud version and local version and take care of that for you. During the migration, you'll need to select a BIM 360 location for the cloud model, so that will have to be set up beforehand. That's something we'll cover a little bit later. If you choose upgrade a copy, a copy of the local cache will be created and you'll be prompted to name it and choose a location for it. That new copy will then be upgraded to the latest release. Note that any outstanding changes in the cloud model will not be synced. 
If you want the copy of the model to remain a cloud model, then you'll need to open it and publish it to the BIM 360 environment. This is very similar to how it was done in older versions of InfraWorks, except that now you will select a folder within a BIM 360 project. Again, if you haven't yet set up BIM 360, you'll need to do it at this point. Now let's say you have a cloud model without a local cache. In this case, your only option is to upgrade. Since there is no local cache, there's nothing to make a copy of to preserve the original. As in the previous example, during your first sync, the model will be migrated to BIM 360. And finally, a model that is entirely local. These are the least common. In this case, you'll be given the same two choices as a locally cached cloud model, upgrade model and upgrade a copy. And the results are exactly the same. Now since these types of models weren't cloud models to begin with, it's assumed that you will want to keep them local. But if at some point you want to publish them to BIM 360, you can certainly do so. Let's take a look at what happens when I open an existing model. I'll choose this Grand Canyon model, which happens to have a local cache. And I'll choose the Upgrade option. InfraWorks begins by opening and upgrading the local cache of the model. Then, when I perform my first sync, I'm prompted to migrate the model to BIM 360. Notice how I've set up a Grand Canyon project beforehand, so that I have a location to publish my model. Once InfraWorks finishes the migration process, I'm ready to make changes and sync them to the cloud whenever I like. Now let's talk about setting up BIM 360. The first step in setting up BIM 360 is to get an account. Before you do anything, check with your company's contract administrator to see if your company already has a BIM 360 account. You don't want to set up a trial or purchase an account under a different name and cause confusion with your company's account. Now if your company doesn't have BIM 360, there are a few paths you can take. If your company subscribes to the AEC collection, it is entitled to a 12-month preview of BIM 360. Your company's contract administrator will have already received an email inviting your company to participate. If your contract admin doesn't have the email, they can reach out to your Autodesk partner and get access to the preview. If your company does not have the AEC collection, then you can sign up for a 30-day trial of BIM 360 by simply going to bim360.autodesk.com. Or you can simply contact your Autodesk partner and subscribe to BIM 360. So what happens at the end of your 12-month preview or 30-day trial? Well, you'll have access to your online data for an additional 30 days, during which time you'll need to subscribe to BIM 360 in order to maintain access to your online data. Now that you have an account, let's look at the next step, creating a project. Start by logging in at bim360.autodesk.com. Then click the matrix icon in the top left and select Account Admin. Click Projects, then click Add. Provide the required information for your project, then click Save and Continue. Click Activate next to Document Management, and then enter your own information as the project administrator. Click Finish. So what just happened? Well, I'll click the project I just created, then I'll click the matrix icon and go to Document Management. Now I see the contents of my project, along with the Project Files folder. Now you can store your InfraWorks model here, but it's better to create a folder for it since there will likely be other project data along with it. To do that, I'll click the ellipsis next to Project Files and select Add Subfolder. Then I'll name my subfolder InfraWorks Models. Now, when I publish my next InfraWorks model, I'll look for this project, then Project Files, and then InfraWorks Models. 
Let's talk now about how Model Builder works in this latest release of InfraWorks. With the latest release, Model Builder will work for you regardless of whether you have a BIM 360 account. If you don't have a BIM 360 account, your Model Builder model will ultimately be stored locally. It will start in the cloud at a temporary location, but after you download and open it the first time, it will remain local. You should note that you can't browse for the model location, but there are ways that you can control where it ends up. For example, if you want to store it within a project folder on your company server. To do this, you can either visit the application options and change the cache location prior to using Model Builder, or you can duplicate the model after it's been created, during which time you'll be prompted for a location. If you do have a BIM360 account, you'll simply choose the project and folder where the new model will reside. Of course, the project must exist before launching Model Builder, so for a brand new project, you'll need to do some project setup in BIM 360 first. Let's see how Model Builder works. First, in a scenario where no BIM 360 account exists. You'll locate your project and provide a name just like before, but there's no need to choose a location because the model will be stored in the cache location. You see the message here indicates that the model will be stored locally. Once the model is ready, its tile appears on the home screen and you can open it. Now if I wanted to control the location of the model before using Model Builder, I could have gone to the application options and set the path here. Or I can open the model in its current location and duplicate it. You can see that I have the ability to store it wherever I like. Now let's look at what happens when you do have a BIM 360 account. It's the same process as before, except this time you'll choose a BIM 360 project and folder where you'd like the model to reside. Of course, if this is a brand new project, you'll have to visit BIM 360 ahead of time and set it up. When the model is ready, the tile will appear and you can open the model. The model has also been created within your BIM 360 project, so you can go there and see it in the online viewer. And you can begin sharing it with others, something we'll talk about in just a bit. Now that you have a BIM 360 project with an InfraWorks model in it, what can you do with it? Well, the short answer is a lot, but let's start with inviting collaborators. There are several ways to do this, but a good place to start is to choose a folder you'd like to share and invite collaborators directly. To do this, click the ellipsis next to the folder you'd like to share. Then click Permissions. Enter the email address of the person you'd like to share with. Then select the permission level. Note the permission levels of Upload Only or View, Upload, Edit, or Control. Control means that the user can add other users and do other administrative tasks within the folder. Then finally click Add. At this point, the user will receive an email inviting them to the project and a tile will appear on their InfraWorks homepage if they have InfraWorks installed on their desktop. From there, they can open the model, make changes, and sync changes if you've given them edit permissions. They can also access the model through the BIM 360 environment to view it, provide comments or markups, and many other things. Now that you've created a project and invited some collaborators, you can continue to add more data to your project and work toward getting as much benefit as possible out of the BIM 360 environment. Syncing models works just like it always did. Once you make changes, Simply sync your model and the changes will be pushed to BIM 360 as a new version. Anyone collaborating with you can sync your changes down to their models so that you all work with the latest version. On the home screen, you can choose BIM 360 projects to filter your InfraWorks models, making them easy to find. In the BIM 360 environment, your InfraWorks model will show up as an IWM file, 
and you can click this file to view it in 3D. Please note that this IWM file is merely a placeholder that represents the model. You can't download it and open it as if it were an InfraWorks model itself. If you have created and published multiple proposals, you can easily choose the proposal you want from the Sheets and Views section on the left. Then you can freely navigate the model by zooming, orbiting, and panning. There's even a first person tool that will allow you or one of your collaborators to walk the model and take a tour. Notice how I can tour this Revit model, which was present within the InfraWorks model when I published it. The section tool is another handy way to view and analyze the model, allowing you to slice it along any plane or angle. You or your collaborators can use the measurement tools to measure distances and angles. And the markup tools are very handy for communication within your team when changes are needed or questions arise. The model browser feature allows you to navigate through the individual components of your model such as buildings, streets, water features, and more. You can also access the settings to control how you navigate your model as well as adjust the performance and appearance settings that best suit your model. For a more formal way of managing questions and issues, you can use the Issues functionality. Issues are located in the model and assigned to a person. You can even assign a due date. In this way, you're not only pointing out problems or questions, but you're also establishing accountability in a way to track whether the issues have been addressed. And that's everything you can do from within your InfraWorks model. Imagine if you uploaded your plan sets, civil 3D drawings, Revit models, photographs, and all your other project data to this powerful collaborative environment. You could benefit from the same online viewing, markups, issue tracking, and other capabilities that you just saw for all your project data, not just InfraWorks models. And your team can do it from their desktops, tablets, or cell phones. All they need is an internet connection. Here are some other things to know about the latest release of InfraWorks as well as older releases. First, if you're not ready to install the upgrade, you can rest assured that at this time Cloud Collaboration and Model Builder are still functional in the previous release and a few releases before that. However, you should know that there are some changes that do present limitations when you're on an older release. For example, Certain cloud-based services can now only be performed in the latest release. These are watershed analysis, traffic simulation, line girder analysis, profile optimization, and corridor optimization. You can read more about this by visiting the URL you see on the screen or by going to knowledge.autodesk.com and searching for InfraWorks services. Also, you should know that if you created any web and mobile views in a previous InfraWorks release, they will no longer be available. BIM 360 and shared views are now the new ways to share and view web-based InfraWorks models. And finally, the InfraWorks iPad app is no longer available. You and your collaborators can now view your online InfraWorks models using the BIM 360 app, which is available for iPad and Android devices. I hope you found this video informative and that it cleared up most, if not all, of your questions about the integration of InfraWorks and BIM 360. Thanks and have a great day.